Hey everybody and welcome back to part three of my mono journey with my QHY 268 camera. Uh, I'm really pleased to say I finally have filters so today we're going to look at how we fit those into the filter wheel. My name is Matt and this is Everyday Astro. Just before we get started, a few things that we are going to need in order to be able to do this today. Uh, the first is a tiny, tiny little screwdriver. Uh, the screws that we're going to be using to fix the filters in place are tiny, so you do need to make sure that you have one of those. Um, if you have one, uh, a lens pen for cleaning the filters as they go in. The last thing you want to do is add a load of dust into it. I would also recommend, if you have one, an air puffer. It'll just help you blow any dust out of the way. Sorry, as I can't find mine, which is just typical. Um, and obviously you need the filters. The other thing I would really suggest is making sure the area you're gonna be working is as clean and dust free as possible. Um, so I've kind of cleaned the table. I'm gonna be working on a piece of paper just to try and reduce the amount of dust. Uh, George has been put in his crate uh, for the foreseeable future, just to make sure that there's no dust being kicked around that's gonna end up on these filters. They are magnets for dust. So anything you can do to try and minimize that is really gonna help you in the long run. I have two sets of filters that are gonna be installed today. Uh, all of them will fit into this QHY filter wheel. First off, I have the LRGB, so the luminance, red, green, and blue filters. So this is for true color images. Um, and on my right, I have three narrowband filters. Um, so that is S2, uh, it is hydrogen alpha, and oxygen three. So they're gonna be my three narrowband images. They, they make the SHO palette, which has been made famous numerous times by Hubble, uh, and a lot of people use. Uh, the only other thing I have in front of me are the screws and the washers that came with the filter wheel. So I'm going to have to work out what size screw and what size uh, washer I'm actually going to need in order to fit these to it. So all I'm going to do with each day is fit one of these filters and then obviously I will, I will not make you sit through watching me install the rest of them, there's just no point in that. I also just wanted to cover off one other quick question I have been asked a couple of times. What is the advantage of doing this in mono versus uh, one-shot colour cameras? A uh, couple of key benefits for me, the first one is you can do the, the proper narrowband imaging, which you can't do with a one-shot colour camera really. Um, the other one is all about the, the, the amount of data that you actually collect uh, when you're using these filters. So as you may know, in a one-shot colour camera, you have a Bayer matrix, which means for every four pixels you have, they end up being squared, and you have one red, two green, and a blue, so RGGB is the Bayer matrix for that. However, when you're using a mono camera, all of the pixels are each of the colors. So whereas, for example, only 25% of the red light that hits your camera is actually being picked up by pixels uh, in your one-shot color camera, with mine, all four are red, all four are blue, and all four are green. So I'm actually getting sort of four times the amount of red data in the same amount of time. I don't really think it equates to four times the amount of uh, resolution and detail, um, but it is certainly gives you far more than using a one-shot colour camera. Of course, the downsides are you have to do luminance, red, green and blue as separate imaging sessions. So if you were going to spend two hours doing it with one-shot colour camera, you might be able to get away with an hour on each filter, but there are four filters, so you've still got twice as much work to do, but the resulting image at the end should give you a better overall picture. Okay, so let's jump in and work out how we're going to start fitting these filters. There's no right or wrong way to install the filters into your wheel. It's simply personal preference as long as you can remember what order they go in. That's all that really matters. Personally, I'm going to follow the, 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 the pretty normal set that goes through. So in one, I'll have luminance and then go red, green, blue, SHO in that order. So I'm going to do those one at a time. Uh, and initially, all we're going to do, I'm, I'm going to move these ones out the way. And what we'll do is we will um, just install the luminance filter for now. So I'm using the astronomic uh, filters. So these are 36mm unmounted filters. They have no threads, so you can't just screw these into place. So this is why these screws and washers come in handy. Um, and with the astronomic filters, uh, you will notice they do come on a mounted ring. So you can see there is some protection to the, the, the filters there. Um, you will also notice, if I try and go a little bit closer to the camera, on one side, the glass is much closer to the edge of this ring than it is on the other side, and that denotes which way up you should have your filter. So the side that has the glass closest to um, the edge of the ring is the side that should be closest to the camera, or in simple ways, that's the way I'm going to drop it into its recess here. 
that isn't the same for every type of filter. Not all of them have these rings, so depending on the manufacturer will depend on um, what, how you install these filters, but there is generally a right way up, so do check with your manufacturer before you just go and install the filters and find you've done it upside down. Uh, just before I drop these in again, I am just going to make sure that there is no dust on this filter. Uh, I will probably end up doing this a number of times. Uh, obviously, if you have an air blower as well, it, it's, it's worth just using that. Um, so I, I can't really find mine at the moment, which is annoying. But one thing to say is don't ever use your breath to do it. Your breath is full of all sorts of nasties and not just COVID. You do not want to be blowing that onto your filters. So don't ever use your breath for it. And the filter, as you've just seen, quite literally just sits into that recess. So it is it's recessed and that will now just sit there. Obviously, if I turn this over, it's just going to fall out. So the idea of these screws and washers is they will be screwed into these points here and that will hold your um, filter in place. What I don't know is which size to use. So I've got three, four and five mil screws and some different sized uh, washers to go with it. So realistically, I, I'm going to do what I always do, start with the shortest. If the shortest doesn't work, you can always uh, move up the scale, but you never know what damage you might do if you put something too long into a hole. Um, so it is always worth just making sure you start with the shorter ones. So I'm, I'm going to start with these as a test. Um, but I am already, just by looking at the washers that come with this, fairly convinced that this first set is not going to work for me. So I'm just going to discard those second. I'm going to start with the middle ones for this. And this, I can assure you, by the way, is going to be fiddly. If, if money is absolutely no object to you, going up to a, a seven filter wheel that takes two inch filters that simply screw into place, it will save you an awful lot of pain and effort in, in actually putting these together. It does mean you can spend an awful lot more money. So these are far better value for money you just need to accept that you're going to be doing annoying little things like this and spending a good few hours or a couple of hours at least putting filters in. Um, just try and get rid of some fluff here. So it is as simple as you put the screw and the washer to one side and then just screw that into place and the washer pushes up against the edge of the filter. So now, I mean, realistically, after one screw, this should technically, yeah, it works. It's already holding that in place. So I think I'm quite happy with using the shortest screws and these filters. You probably don't need to put all three of these screws in place for each one. Um, it is probably a little bit overkill, but to be honest with you, I'd rather have too much than too little. So um, I am going to put all of them in place. So let's just do this last one and then I can show you what it looks like. And again, do be very careful with these screws. You are working very close to a filter. I'm sure a tiny screw like this wouldn't cause too much damage to a filter, but wherever possible, you don't want to be dropping things onto your filter. So, so if you look, that's what it looks like once it's actually in place. Um, I'd say from the other side, you can see there is, uh, there's no screws protruding on this side. You definitely don't want anything along those lines coming uh, through the other side. You never know what it might catch on as the filter wheel is moving. Um, but that's the, the way that these filters are actually put in place. So, so it, it's not going to come out, he says. No, no, that seems pretty good. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to install the rest of these. Um, and I won't put you through the pain of watching me have to do that and I'll be back in a few seconds. That was actually super easy. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised at how, how short a time that took for it. took me 15 minutes to get all of those into there. It does help as you kind of get used to how to manipulate screws and how to get them in. It does make it easier each time which probably helps. Um, but just so that you can see this is what the final filter wheel um, looks like. So I have all the filters now in place, which is great. So all that's left for me to do is rebuild this, uh, put it all together as I've done in, in my previous connecting video. So I won't go over that again in this one, uh, but I will put a link just so that you can follow that if you need to. Uh, tonight is supposed to be clear skies. Um, we'll, we'll see, obviously these, these filters only turned up today. So I refuse to believe I can have new equipment and clear skies on the same day. 
but if it does stay clear, then the, tonight is going to be the first time I actually get to test this camera in anger. So I'm going to head outside with that soon. I'm going to try and take some dark frames and flat frames and see what they look like. Now there's supposedly no amp glow with this camera, so I'm really, really keen to know that do the dark frames come out looking like that. Uh, and also hopefully get some first light with this camera as well, which I'll share with you in my next video. Until then, I hope you all stay safe and I'll see you soon. Thanks guys. <laughs>